I had one of those experiences where you go, excitement, excitement, it came, yay, followed by immediate disappointment. I purchased a banjo lin, a mandolin banjo in the shape of a banjo. Um, what attracted me to it initially was uh, the name Lark in the Morning. I own two other Lark in the Morning instruments, a A model mandolin and a resonator guitar. Um, and so I thought this would be fun to own a banjo lin. Um, and, uh, and so I opened the thing up and I thought, that's great. I reached in, I grabbed it and I immediately knew something was wrong because grabbing it, I realized the action on here was like driving underneath an interstate bridge. It's huge. And I thought, well, you know, what's going on there? The strings were real tight too. It was dang near up to tune. And, uh. And so I was trying to figure out what, what was going on, and I realized a little bit of, uh, of space back here. And so what I discovered, I'll sit down, what I discovered was that this plywood ring here, the pot has crushed and so something has gone horribly wrong and uh, I double checked my listing and look at that once I can get that to a good spot it'll be great action but so I double checked my listing and uh, the guy is not an instrument seller. He's one of those estate sale people. So he probably came across this, thought, hey, that looks great. And he's right. It looks amazing. Um, polishes up real nice uh, and uh, looks like it's in great condition. But um, bummer. That's where we're at. So I got to thinking, you know, what, what can I do about this? First thing I did was I loosened the strings tremendously to stop any possibility of it doing any further damage. Um, and, uh, and so now the next thing that I can do is uh, start taking it apart. <laughs> any excuse to DIY an instrument, right? So the first step, I've taken off the tail piece. I took off the strings and the tail piece is held on by two very small screws and this little tail piece nut which can be used as uh, a place to attach your um, strap. So I pulled that off. The next thing I'm going to do is take off all of these little Phillips head screws holding it into the pot. Um, these hex head or Allen wrench screws, I believe are what's holding the drum head on. So my next step, unscrew all of these. I've removed all the screws and if I can, well, one handed. There we go. Just sort of drops right out. Just like a little drum head. And I was right. Okay, so this Allen wrench. Okay. Put that over there. And here we have the pot. And wow. Okay. So this, I want to, I guess I want to take this apart. And uh, 
You want to see underneath where the bridge hits. Okay, so I didn't adjust that nut. Hopefully I can put it back the way it belongs. But this, uh, that comes out, it unscrewed. This, uh, this unscrewed from that side. Put all that up there so I don't lose it, please. There we go. And off with the head. This, oh, that's nice. Has a, a post that goes through holding this in place. So I'm going to leave that just the way it is. And now, look at that pot. You can see how it's crushed right here. So when it comes under tension, this, uh, this top folds in on itself. So I have to figure out a way to reinforce this. Because if I just put a wedge there, let's do this. If I just stuff a wedge in there, like shim it, that was strange, technical difficulties. Um, when I bring it up to tension, it'll just cause the pot to crush some more. So, I have to decipher a way to uh, reinforce it from the inside while maintaining enough room for this to fit in there. It would really be beneficial if I could reinforce it. I mean, imagine if I could put a dowel or some something there and wedge it in place and then put the pot back on. But that's not going to happen because of the thickness of the pot, of the head. That's what I... Hmm. All right, so we're in a what the heck are you doing mode. I've got the neck uh, put back on, hopefully in the right spot. I have used some snips to snip a bit of a hacksaw blade down and um, have it in place. And so what I'm going to do is wedge this head right there, keeping the hacksaw blades in place, the space between the pot and the head will be taken up by the hacksaw blades. And then when the strings come up to tension, this shouldn't crush down on itself because the structural integrity of the pot being held in place by the screws and this wedge being taken up by this metal ring. <sighs> In theory. Okay, I've got it reassembled. You can see the three pieces of spring metal hacksaw blade in there. And I, I'm aware that what's going to happen here is the cr spot that's already still crushed is still going to bring this up significantly you can see it move a lot so i've got to stick a shim in there to keep this flat and probably another piece or two of this wrapped in tape let's see what that does well it took uh, quite a bit of doing but i got it back up to tune um you still using the old strings that's my uh, way, you know, use old strings until it's time to put new ones on. Um, it is now in a playable position. That's nice action right there. Probably could be a smidge lower, but I'm not going to complain since I've got all these wedges in here. Um, I left the tape on, so if I need to make some adjustments, I can pull it out, put it back in. Uh, I have small shims in there. Um, I may go to longer shims. Um, I'll show you something here. Uh, 
it's very easy for for just by tweaking on the neck a little bit it, it falls out of tune yeah so um, I may put in a shim that goes from the whole one side of the neck to the other side of the neck as opposed to just a small shim on the inside my plan was to do the shim tear the tape off you wouldn't see it anymore now I think I'm gonna need to do something bigger so that it it takes up it gives um, space to take up the whole thing but uh, it sounds like a mandolin again and it's playable Practice. That's why I'm buying these things. <laughs> Still a little bit uh, more work to do on this, but uh, I have gone from complete disappointment to uh, a fair bit of satisfaction. <laughs> and uh, I didn't have to pay somebody a whole bunch of money to go and, uh, in a sense, rebuild rebuild the pot. That, that's, and who knows, I may still at some time in the future um, I've got a banjo, an open back banjo. I kind of like that sound. Um, uh, I might want to replace this entire pot with a an open back ring. Um, who knows? We'll just kind of see what my options are in the years to come. But there you have it. Just a little bit of work, and I took my lark in the morning banjo, uh, man, <laughs> banjo tar banjo lin and uh and turned it into a uh, workable instrument so i uh, hope you enjoyed this little uh, bit of work on this and uh, thank you so much for watching